Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. These days, it is a rare week when no news story breaks about some new, almost fantastic weapon developed by American scientists. But no matter how many valuable devices are added to our defense arsenal, the basic vital element of the United States Army remains constant, the individual soldier. He may have any one of a thousand jobs, but every soldier and every job are directly related to a single unswerving purpose. The subject of today's big picture, the role of the Army. Today, mankind lives in a state of civil and military revolution unparalleled in history. The most powerful weapons are moved much more accurately, directed over longer distances, and travel at speeds unbelievable a decade ago. Our military revolution is three-pronged. Experiments in jet propulsion with rockets have been in progress for half a century, but only in recent years has the rocket attained full stature as a highly lethal, precisely controlled weapon. Combining jet propulsion with advances in thermonuclear explosives brings the concept of the ultimate weapon nearer reality. In no area of scientific development has there been greater success than in electronics. Electric circuits and cathode ray tubes are increasing man's capabilities for destruction, surpassing his own physical limitations. As each new weapon is perfected and introduced in the military arsenal, science is called upon to produce an antidote, a weapon to counterweapon. Electronic brains with senses more acute than man's own are planted in steel containers to seek out and destroy enemy targets with infallible deadliness. More and more, the role of the machine in modern military power increases in size and importance. Television, once the bugaboo of the radio and motion picture industries, has added a new perspective to the battlefield. The electronic eye narrows the gulf between the combat zone and command headquarters. Conversely, today's technology tends to widen the gap between combatants. Rarely do opponents look upon each other's faces. Surrounded by metal and plastic, supported by artificial air, guided by sensitive gauges, they pursue, attack, and kill one another with mathematical detachment. However, at the core of every machine, or setting every machine in motion, is the individual fighting man charged with the responsibility of maintaining the security of the United States are the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Under their command are both the machines and the manpower of the United States Army, Navy, and Air Force. To the Navy, naturally, falls the mission of controlling the seas. In World War II and Korea, sea, air, and land forces have proved to be equally essential components in total United States military strength. Each service, equipped and designed for combat in a certain element, is supreme in its own area. To maintain that supremacy, each service of necessity uses some of the basic tools of its sister services. To the Air Force goes the task of maintaining control of the air. Upon occasion, each service functions independently as the job at hand requires, and though vital in its own right, no branch is more important than another to our national security.
as the Navy takes to the air, so the Air Force frequently operates in the natural domain of the Army, the land. Low-level bombing in support of ground troops makes the job of the infantrymen much easier. 